If you haven't watched the last video, I recommend you go watch it. In the previous video, Lu Sheng knew he could change the future. With the hope of getting stronger so he can change the course of humanity's destruction. Inside the Martial Arts Association, we see a man doing calligraphy in his office, and on the screen, a man denounces him, saying he should put more effort into educating others and work harder. The man doing calligraphy is the assistant director of the Baihei Martial Artist Association, Xiao Juha. Staying calm, he explained that it was not that he didn't want new geniuses to appear, it was just that Baihei had no century-old family to succeed. They also lacked resources to train geniuses, so most of them left by all means. The president tells him the training camp is happening soon. Without sending out anyone for many years, for a big organization, it is embarrassing not to send anyone. The president tells Xiao that he must do well for the organization this time. Xiao angrily shouts that he wants nothing more than to discover a genius and do well for the organization. Even with him being in the top position, he is still unable to progress. Feeling dejected, he sees his secretary bust through the door. Wondering why she didn't even knock, she told him that it was an urgent matter. She tells him that just now, in the assessment, an 18-year-old level 2 martial artist has appeared. Excited, he snatches the tablet to look at the recording. After carefully reviewing the video, Xiao Juha couldn't contain his excitement. He realized that this was a golden opportunity for the Baihei City Martial Artists Association. If they could guide and nurture this young talent, he could become a martial arts prodigy and bring fame and recognition to their city. Since his secretary wasn't a martial artist, he explained that Lu Sheng had perfect realm fighting technique and that cultivating the perfect realm at his age is something that no more than 10 people in the world have been able to accomplish. He suspects Lu Sheng of being a gifted martial artist, the ones who awaken tremendous power that an ordinary person cannot imagine. In a rush, he puts on his coat, personally taking a trip to Lu Sheng's home. Outside of the martial hall dojo, Sister Ni was waiting for any news of Lu Sheng, and just then her junior told her all the information he had collected on Lu Sheng. Her junior asked why Senior Ni was looking for him and asked if it was for a personal grudge. Sister Ni tells him to shut up, which he obediently obeys, not daring to speak anymore. Sister Ni answered a call, this call was from her friend in the Martial Arts Association. Getting the news of Lu Sheng's deeds, she tells her junior to go buy some expensive gifts to give to Lu Sheng's family and to take her to their house. Lu Sheng was diligently cultivating in his room when he heard a knock at his door. His sister yelled that someone was there looking for him. As he walked out the door, his family gathered on the sofa with a few other strangers. The president of the Baihei Martial Artist Association, Xiao Juha, who was also a level 6 master, stood up to greet Lu Sheng. Calm, Lu Sheng shook his hand and gave his greetings back. Xiao Juha admired his temperament for being calm and collected. Wondering who the other person was, his mother told him that it was the daughter of the director of the martial arts dojo he goes to. He greets her and goes back to the main topic. The president tells him that he and his family that he has received the level 2 martial artist insignia, and because his battle power already exceeds that of level 2, he would get a monthly allowance of that of a level 3 martial artist. Not just that he would get a monetary award of a million dollars. His family is in total shock, as if they didn't want to wake up from this dream. Lu Sheng expresses his thanks, but knowing there is no free lunch in the world, he asks what the president would like for him to do. The president was hoping, asking if he would join the Dongning province's talent training camp. Sister Ni, shocked by what she just heard, explains that the training camp that gathers all the talented martial artists who are gifted is also a place that destroys talent. She tells him that a senior from their martial dojo went to participate in the training camp and that he was once bold and confident in his ability. But once out, he became miserable and measly. She tells him that there is no need to take that risk. The president explains that it is true and only true talents are picked out, he believes Lu Sheng is different from those who have tried before, and respecting Lu Sheng's decision, he holds out the letter for him to choose. Lu Sheng grabs the letter, saying that this isn't his limit yet. The president tells him he'll pick him up in two days and leaves. Lu Sheng then asks Sister Ni what she wanted. She tells him she wants to invite Lu Sheng as an honorary disciple of their martial dojo and is willing to give him the best treatment there. She wanted to invite Lu Sheng so that their martial dojo would explode in popularity. Lu Sheng rejects it, he says that he can be an honorary member but not a disciple because he doesn't need it. Sister Ni has no choice, she agrees. She tells him he'll get a monthly payment of $100,000 and is not willing to impose any longer, so she leaves. His family is still in the living room in shock at Lu Sheng's achievement, asking him when he became a level 2 martial artist and if it was a dream. Lu Sheng tells them it is all real that they no longer need to work so hard and that he can support them too. Back at the pharmacy lab, 
Missy stresses about not being able to find anything about the genius that made the tonic, not even his name. The drugs he developed are the best she has ever seen, having almost no side effects and being long-lasting. While complaining about not being able to find him. The clerk tells her that he found him and points at the TV. Showing on the TV was the news of Lu Sheng celebrating him as the genius of Baihe City. The stunned Missy sits down, shocked that Lu Sheng is a student. In the middle of the forest, we see a person moving at a remarkable speed, that person is Lu Sheng. By using the fixed star power with the dreamland absorption, his speed becomes faster than that of the normal level 2 martial artist by at least fivefold. Racing up the mountain, he reaches the summit, where he uses the natural breathing technique, with every breath he takes in, he absorbs energy from the air. Deeply focused on cultivating at the summit, as if he could feel everything around him and harmonize with nature, he makes a breakthrough in this cultivation. Lu Sheng's blood and qi value have risen quite a bit, and his star power is now six times that. The reason he was in the lonely mountain was to collect some ingredients for a marrow nourishing pill, and he didn't expect to make a breakthrough. The herbs that he has been collecting have not been discovered for their true medicinal value, and after ordering the other herbs from the vendor at the bottom of the mountain, he races down the mountain, testing his newfound speed. At the bottom of the mountain, we see the herb vendor whom Lu Sheng orders from. The vendor has baskets out in front. Lu Sheng asks to buy 10 stalks of every herb and try to pay the agreed price. The vendor tells him that it now doubles the prices and tries to force Lu Sheng to buy all the herbs. Thug like men come out from behind the trees because there are no cameras, they plan to rob Lu Sheng and rough him up. Lu Sheng put his hand on a huge boulder sized rock and put some of his power inside his palm. He forces the rock to crack as if it had been hit by an explosion. The men stop dead in their tracks, feeling their backs start to sweat. Lu Sheng asks why he should be admitting defeat in this situation while vaporizing a rock with his hands. The men kneel down, begging Lu Sheng to spare them. Lu Sheng begins to take all the herbs, tells them that trust is the key to running a business, and leaves. The men thank Lu Sheng and tell him that they'll turn over a new leaf. The men wonder if all the students are so strong now and that Lu Sheng's strength is unreasonable. After one day of driving, when Lu Sheng arrives at the training camp, he sees people wearing their military insignias. He forgot that his mother had already put his on display. A man dressed in a military uniform asks Lu Sheng where he is from. Lu Sheng tells him that he is from Baihe City. The other people in the crowd hear that Lu Sheng is from Baihe City and begin to make fun of him. The soldier yells at the crowd to keep quiet. He tells Lu Sheng he can enter with those from Qingyuan City. Lu Sheng wondered why they were going in a group and heard the gate behind him close. Everyone was in a panic, asking why they would lock them up. The soldier said that they would have to go through an entrance test by going through the walkways. If they failed, they would be sent back to their hometown. The group, in a panic, starts to freak out and asks that they be told it was a ceremony and not a test. Not having any time, the floor split open, causing the people to fall. Lu Sheng lands on his feet while a few others are able to catch themselves. Inside the walkway, Lu Sheng uses his powers to sense the area. He senses there are traps and black figures near the door on the walls. Lin Xiaoyu, who was from Qingyuan City, came out of the crowd, saying that he expected this sneer at the simplicity of the entrance ceremony. Someone from the crowd argues why he didn't tell them ahead from the beginning. Lin Xiaoyu trash talks him and tells him not to tell others around him that he's a genius from Qingyuan City or that he'll spoil their reputation. A girl from the group stops them from fighting, saying that they're all from the same city and should think of a way to pass the test. Lin Xiaoyu agrees, saying someone should scout out the hallway for them. Since Lu Sheng was from a different town, Lu Xiaoyu asked him to volunteer, and a guy from the crowd laughed at Lu Sheng, thinking of using him as a lab rat for testing traps. Lin Xiaoyu thinks Lu Sheng was too scared to go and was about to go. Stop by Lu Sheng. Lin Xiaoyu tells him that if he does well, he'll let him tag along. Lu Sheng laughs at him and tells him that predators move alone while cattle move in groups. Angry at the statement, he says he is going to fight him. Lu Sheng, already stepping into the hallway, activates a trap. The balls coming out of the wall start to transform into mechanical puppets. The mechanical puppet's weakest standards are already that of a rank 1 martial artist, and with so many, the group starts to panic. Lu Sheng, standing right in front, examines it since it was his first time seeing one. The others make fun of him for just standing there. When the robot had swung, Lu Sheng stood there unfazed. As if an explosion went off, dust and debris scattered the walkway. The dust dispersed, with Lu Sheng holding the robot's arms and not letting it move. The others were shocked that he had managed to stop it. Lu Sheng, holding it with his hand, picks the big robot up and slams it into the roof. 
Lin Xiaoyu laughs, thinking that the robots are just to fool them and are just weak because Lu Shangs had easily passed them. He goes up to the robot and kicks its head off. Thinking he has beaten the robot, he celebrates, and just then the robot, without a head, swings at him from behind, smacking him into the wall. He tells the group that those aren't grade 1 puppets but grade 2 puppets that are closer to a level 3 martial artist. They then begin to wonder how strong Lu Sheng is. Lu Sheng crushes all the robots in his pathway with ease and walks into the next door. On the other side of the door was a man who was trying to figure out why the robots weren't working. Looking at his tablet, he finds out they have all been wrecked. Lu Sheng walks in and assumes the man is the next gatekeeper, he goes straight for an attack. The man was surprised. In a huge control room, we see a beautiful woman named Dong Quangshu dressed in a dark blue school officer's uniform. Just then, a young man named Chin Shaojin walks through the door and lounges around with a cup of coffee, appearing carefree. She asks him if he is free to come help her review materials. He takes a seat and asks her how the quality of students is doing in this year's training camp. She sighs, telling him that only eight have met their standard, which has awakened their gift. While the others had pretty ordinary gifts, one of them was a psychic type who was only 18 years old. She is also pretty talented in martial arts and is a rank 1 medalist. He jokes that the 18-year-old was a genius like her back then. She tells him to cut it out and that she'll be the main training target for this year's training camp. Chin Shaojin sits down to check on the other students and suddenly spits out coffee from his mouth, shocked at what he was seeing on the screen. 